So here we are back in the uh, the Diner of Dreams with Mr. Ricky Elder. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm alright. I'm hurting. I'm miserable. You've got the sling off though, which is good. Got the sling off. No, I've just got massive gash on my arm. Two gash. So yeah, we'll be alright. So I was being miserable in hospital and decided to cheer myself up. So I've bought something, Davy. But but where is it? Um. Okay. I don't think it's going to take people much to guess what it is. Should we should we do a build up or should we just sort of just just get on with it? Should we just get on with it? Yeah. Oh, oh. I caught a number plate. There she is. In red. So, obviously, Gen Two R Eight. Yep. Plus carbon ceramics, carbon engine bay, carbon, carbon, carbon. Um, so this is a new personal toy or have you got plans for this? Oh, plans for this lad. So we're gonna call this project three. And this is gonna be, what have we got to do to get three seconds, 100 to 200? So I'm gonna do it as logically as I can. So obviously it's going to go turbo. We'll mess around with it first, naturally aspirated. Um, we haven't put MoTeC on a naturally aspirated one yet, so MoTeC want us to go up there and put a kit on at their headquarters, so we'll do a video about that. Cool. Um, I'm going to... Quicksilver have donated a Perfomante exhaust, so I think I'm going to put a Perfomante rear end on it and mess around with that. Uh, but we build so many customers' cars, we never really get to push as hard as say me and Coxie did on his car yep. um, or what we've done on our other development cars because it just isn't fair. It's their pride and joy. You know, if they see videos of us can, <laughs> trying to do 100 to 200 all this stuff. So, yep. you know, this is, I am Denard. I wanted, everybody that knows me knows I want a McLaren. Um, luckily we've had a couple of guys step in who want to push their McLarens on. So that's kind of allowed me to delay our development, us having to get a car to do our development on. So we've got a couple of stage two plus 720s come in. I've got another 570 build coming off the back of our engine build. So that's kind of moving on. So I thought, you know what? Me and Coxie haven't really gone mental on a, on a Gen 2 yet. We've built the other guys' ones. We've got a time attack car, John's time attack car. So, okay, let's see what it takes to throw the crank on the floor. You know, I've got engines out in the corner. So I'm gonna do, uh, Cyvex have got the new Haldex controller. So we're gonna put that on. I'm gonna put MoTeC on it. I'm gonna leave it NA for now. And then I'll benchmark where it is, where it is 100 to 200, what it does, what power it does. You, you know, we can play around the traction control settings and the launch control and stuff like that. I've already ordered the turbos. They were ordered for you, got a car. <laughs> of course. To do a video on them. Yes. So Owens have hooked me up with turbos. So precision, mirror image, 62, 66s. Um, no point going 64s because we're out. We're out the bottom of the efficiency curve anyway. Why do I want to make the wheels bigger? We're not. So we'll do that. Um, purple ancillaries. So purple blow offs, purple waste gates. So Coxie's going to finish. Uh, build me a turbo kit. No big rush. I'm got it. Got cars out there smashing it. Do you know what I mean? We're the only ones in Europe building kits. We're, between us and James, no one else is building kits in UK. UK or Europe, everyone else is bringing them over from America. So um, we're the only ones selling them. We've got, we've got, what have we done, that 10, 11, you know, from GTs to V8s to Gen 2s. So, okay, let's do this. Let's see where this goes. Um, you know, you've probably seen, I don't know, there's a 720 in a workshop. So you know the McLaren thing will come but this popped up um, I was looking at a yellow one through a friend um, and it turned out that was clocked so I think he was a bit heartbroken because he sort of found us a car that had everything that had buckets everything then a black one turned up and I knew the black one when I dug into it I knew the black one it used to be owned by Swindon Audi and that had been the smash um, it had 500 miles on it and someone pulled out on the street around the corner and hit it but that's up for a sale at a dealer in Leeds oh yes and then uh, we're on this massive whatsapp group R8 owners whatsapp group 
and an owner put up on there uh, that he was selling his R8 to get into his Lamborghini and we got chatting and it's just it's just right the mileage is right the spec is right uh, he's probably as picky as I am on the kind of car it is so yeah red oh, do you know what when you say red cars it's like only a Ferrari should be red but when it turned up when I got it I was like do you know what I think it works I think the red and the black works it's like I'm not one for black wheels you know, I was thinking, right, they've got to be the silver 20s, they've got to be the silver 20s. Um, but I think it looks, I think it looks trick. I think it looks trick. I think it works, it works with the carbon. Yeah. And who's to say it's going to stay red? Yeah, I, uh, do you know what, mate? All along, I wanted Simon spec, black on black. Yep. That was it, the murdered out black look. But yeah, I, so many things have gone from my head these last couple of days are, okay, we'll wrap it purple and we'll do this and we'll do that. But. Yeah, I can't ride my bike anymore, so cheer myself up. <laughs> so I guess there's going to be a pretty extensive series for the channel with yeah, this. Yeah, like uh, we've said before, I bought a combustion pressure tester, so the spark plugs have finally come back from Optran now, and we had two made. We had one made for this engine, we had one made for McLaren engine. So I'm going to, I'll put that on. I've got a big data logger to do, uh, to look at inlet manifold pressure over combustion pressure over exhaust pressure so we'll look at that we'll look at that naturally aspirated so i'll capture a load of data off that like i said i want to play with the new cyvex four-wheel drive controller the haldex controller so we'll get that on there um yeah just something i would something i would play around with but ultimately three seconds 100 to 200 that's where i want to try and get it um i think jürgen's Closer. I mean, GTRs are smashing it. They're like down to two and a half in the UK, but they're running 14, 15 hundred horsepower. I think Jürgen's 3.1, 3.2 in his Hurricane. So, you know, it's, it's doable. I just think it'd be quite cool. Literally as little as possible bolts to that car. Yeah. So the other side is we get so many customers come in or so many people come in going, I'm thinking about twin turbo. What's it like? How do you explain it? Yeah. Have you, you haven't even driven one yet, have you? No. There's no, there's no describing what it's like. It's no, uh, even if you come off bikes, yeah, because it's completely different how how a car sort of captures you, how the car holds you. So it, it's kind of what you and Guy were were chatting about in the previous videos, you know, about that that sensation of speed. It's something we need to maybe try and get him in as well. Yeah, I mean, this is it's something we were chatting about as well. Is I, I kind of want to. I want Al to drive it, Al Fagan from 44T. Yep. He plays with so much fast stuff. I think to get someone like him in, I mean, he's raced British superbikes, he'd done that CBR supercharged thing with TTS every week, so he knows what fast stuff is. Yep. I want to sit him in one of these and I want to see how someone like that would react. Who knows what fast is? I know what these do, I know what bikes do, but someone who has no concept of the car side to jump in it and go, yeah, okay, we're talking, you know, we're talking quick now. I mean, he's ridden Motor GP machinery, world superbike stuff. He knows what the fastest bike in the world, fastest bikes in the world feel like. So yeah. I think something like Al jumping in it and reacting naturally to how quick it is would be quite sort of a doff of the cap almost to well, what it's like. If we can do do a collaboration with the guys at 44teeth.com and their channel. Yeah, um, I'm not letting the Baron drive it though. He's like the king of crashing, isn't he? <laughs> Mind you, I say that we have something in common now because we've both crashed BMWs. There you go, you see? Yeah. With the scars to prove it. Fucking heartbroken. Okay, cool. So there's going to be lots more to come from this. This is just the, the initial introduction of look the project. Look at what I bought! Yes! Well, there it is. Actually, uh, I have got. Look at what the bank bought for me! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this was my. This was what I turned my set layer into, so. Yeah. Not, not a bad switcheroo. No, it's, it's, it's all right. Like I said, it'll be, it, yeah, for what it is, I forget, you just forget how good they are. You forget how good they are. But, like the lads are taking a mick because it's turned up and you're just kind of a little bit like, yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Like, you know what I mean? And it's not to sound ungrateful, yeah. but when you're surrounded by the stuff we're surrounded with, yeah. I think we all got more excited about Jordan's Twingo. <laughs> like than we did about this turning up which is yeah. wrong but it just messes with your 
you're so used to the high quality stuff or the high level cars that come in here. Yeah, you become desensitized to it. Yeah. Which, yeah, yeah. again, is another reason that you're going to go full on with this and create something that pushes the limits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay, guys. Right. Well, we'll look forward to seeing more of this. We'll, uh, we'll try and get regular vids up on the channel. In Mexico. In Mexico, of course, and uh, all those private test tracks that we've got access That's to. That's it. Get slagged off for my driving now as well as my, what was it, <laughs> someone put my hit the haircut. <laughs> okay. Gotta love the comments. No, you should turn comments off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But could you, all joking aside, in the comments, um, anybody wants to say what they think you should do with it, maybe a colour to wrap it or a certain type of wheel to put on it. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, like I'm really impressed with how well that people have taken to the YouTube stuff because, uh, all right, the guy chat, the, the chats with Guy and JM are just sort of, not fluke, but they were just chats that you've just captured two people chatting. But the car stuff we do, that's ultimately what kind of we geek out on. So nine times out of 10, geeky stuff doesn't translate. Nobody watches or nobody, do you know what I mean? We yeah. don't do sort of the BS entertainment, the, what do they call it? Um, the, the titles that try to grab it, clickbait titles, you yeah, know. Yeah. Oh, we blew this car up and actually it's just a tire's gone flat on a road. To, yeah, you, we you try know. and stay away from that. Yeah, so to see how well people have responded to the geeky stuff we've done, like the engine build stuff and the chats on that, it's, it's really cool. So hopefully, you know, it'll be, people People like it, like what we do. You know, I've had quite a lot of people email me privately saying how excited they are about the combustion pressure analysis, because unless you're in F1 or proper engine development, or you've got a 90,000 pound Kistler key box, it's, un it's unobtainable. So, all right, the Plex wasn't cheap, but, you, you know, we'll see, I don't know what numbers it's gonna spit out. And that's, that's the point is that we'll just have a plane and see what it does. But yeah, it should be quite, should be quite cool. Cool, well, you, uh, you better get on some work now to pay for the, know, uh, pay for the car. Mate, it's gonna be like two, two o'clock, like when my bike turned up. When my bike turned up and it was a road bike, I was like, and it was red when I got it. I was like, well, because road bikes are rubbish. <laughs> I can't look at road bikes. Uh, just just re remind anybody who's not aware of what the road bike is or was. So it was a BMW S1000RR, so the 2021. Um, I had an R1, so everyone, everyone knows I race. I had an R1, I had it for ages, and my friend runs OMG BMW. Um, so there's Paul Curran runs PCR in Canuck. Um, he was quick, he was a quick, quick boy, and now he's too old and Justin Bieber's chubby double, so <laughs> he may, he don't ride anymore, so he runs a team. And he messaged me going, you've got to get one of these BMWs. And like a crack dealer, <laughs> rings me up going, oh, we, uh, we've got like, no other spare bike, do you want it? Um, <laughs> mate, he must have seen me in my pants then. So I get this BMW and I turn up and I'm like, nah, it's all right, it's a road bike, it wasn't pretty. And then we sort of turned it into a, put race fairings on it and I went to Snat and I tested it the first time and it was like, oh my God, I fell in love with it. Yeah. It's just, just game changer. And then to follow that story on, we raced a couple of times last year, done the last round of British Superstocks, um, got my ass kicked. And then we went testing in April, we went to Brands. So that was the first round of the club I cut my teeth in, which was NG, it used to be called North Gloucester. Done test on Friday. Um, so like Joe Sheldon Shaw was there, who's a stocker lad. Uh, Dan Cooper, who's like raced the TT. Two couple of really quick boys. We get away at the front. So it's them one, two, me three. I come out of Druid and I don't even remember how it, I just end up skating down the track of my ass. Um, I don't think it was cold tire. It definitely didn't go down because I've seen the bike. Um, it didn't go down. It was a scrub from last year but I'd done a warmer plap on it, I got no warnings. Anyway, my fault, I've probably been a little bit too keen. I didn't go, I thought it threw me out the front door, like over the top, so proper high side. Yep. But a couple of boys who, who were behind me on track said, the bike just come out from under me. Like it just collapsed out from under me. So anyway, I go skating down the track. And it's like, that's terrifying. Start, near the start of a race, 40 bikes on track. That's what, what sort of speed were you carrying then, do you top think? Top second gear, so 120 mile an hour. <laughs> So yeah, driving hard down to Grey Mill, and I'm like, 
So I crash and in my head I was just thinking, get up, Rick, get up, Rick, get up, Rick. And I get up and there's bikes everywhere. Like I know mine's gone off. It's gone off and down towards Graham Hill, but onto the grass. I know it's out of the way because that's the biggest thing. Here you go, this is stupidity of bike races. A bike and a rider skating down a track, everyone avoids the bike. Yeah. Because the bike will do you more damage than the rider will. So your natural instinct is to avoid the bike. So I knew the bike was out of the way, so it was just me. So I get up, I jump through all of them, and I, I'm getting off track, and this, I fucking hate Ducatis. Ducati comes along and wipes me out. Um, so double brake in my left forearm. Um, and that's what put me out. Ended up in hospital for a week, uh, waiting for an operation to, they were both displaced. So I now have forged internals. Um, so I was out, been out of the it's cast two scar. weeks. Chicks dig scars. Double scar, yeah. Um, but it's messed my hand up, so I can, I can't pull that finger straight at the minute. That is about it. My wrist is like twice the size. So, but I mean, however much I want to get back on a bike at the minute, I've got to concentrate on getting my hands sorted or getting better. Yeah. So I can bloody work. Mate, honestly, I've gone back to typing like this. Yeah. So if you are trying to get older me and I'm being slow, I'm really sorry, but like, there's this, a pretty good reason for that. Pretty, yeah, this is proper bless K. It's yeah, it's been it's been hard first couple of weeks, and then kind of beat myself up a little bit as well because I'm frustrated. I'm impatient. I want it fixed now. So my arm's mint. Like I've got no pain in my arm. Yeah. It's all like from my wrist down. Um. So I think I must have badly sprained my wrist. I must have because the energy like that was purple. Um. I wear Alpine Star gloves and they've got like uh, blades on the back of the knuckles to protect your knuckles yeah and they when they scanned me i had two lacerations in my liver and a massive bruise across my stomach and it's where i've braced myself like this and the force of the bike hitting my arm so the bike's hit me here i've punched myself in the stomach basically and i've cut my i've cut my own or left the laceration on my own liver from my gloves um brand new output uh, brand new rst suit that cut me out of that I ended up going to hospital, mate, in a, a set of Under Armour trousers and nothing else. <laughs> like literally for a week, I had a set of pants, uh, Under Armour trousers. Uh, a, a client really, really kindly brought me home. So I was stuck in King's College Hospital. So I had no phone charger. Um, I was sending my phone around the ward trying to get it charged by like, different people there. Um, I was in King's College Hospital in London and a client knew I'd crashed and said, oh, where are you? And I said where I was. He said, right, when you're ready to come out. I'll, I'll bring you home so go hard so that was lovely of him to do that but I like walked out right to him in like a hospital t-shirt my underarmers a pair of like red grippy socks that they give you yeah but also uh, because it's major trauma they send they send my helmet to hospital so I literally made a green bag full of crap and a helmet that's smashed to smithereens my <laughs> outride like is beautiful that is now ready for the skip in red right. socks, green trousers. Yeah. Mate, honestly, I look like a <laughs> <laughs> And I was just like, I get home and he's, he's brought me here and Kate's met, like, I went the Thursday night, um, tested the Friday, crashed the Saturday. So then they put me on nil by mouth, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and canceled the operation at four o'clock in the afternoon every day because they were too busy. Finally got it done Friday and then let me, f sorry, Thursday, let me out on Friday night. So I've been, I haven't seen Kate for like eight days. And then, yeah, so she's going to break this arm when this one's better for mate, crashing. You've got some making up to do, it oh, seems. Oh, mate. Good job you bought her a lovely red R8, really, eh? And do you know what the bit of pit, like the bit of pissed me off the most is the bike's pretty much mint. Yeah. It's tore the fairings off, which is fine. It broke a peg and it snapped the handlebar. If matey hadn't bit me, mate, I'd have been back out in the afternoon. Yeah. 125 quid prize money on a pot to keep my change in. That's what I missed out on. <laughs> now I'm stuck with like forged internals. Yeah. Everyone taking a mick. Can barely wipe your head. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Never mind. A bit there we right. go. Anyway, racing. we're back at it. Well done, yeah. mate. I'm here. I'm Glad alive. Glad to see you feeling better anyway. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, let's get busy with some more filming. Cool. Cool. See you all soon. Take it easy. Cheers.